Welcome to Ellie and Maggie's Literacy Baking Show. Come on in into our kitchen. Today we have a very interesting day. We are going to be creating a fun and sweet cake. We're going to have to use a few of our favorite literacy topics to create our best cake yet. Let's get started. Oh, First we need a bowl and all of our materials situated so that we can easily make this cake. <laughs> Ellie, can you pass me the flour so we can begin? Of course, how much do we need? We need one cup of flour. Sounds good, I'll get on to that. Now remember friends, flour represents shared writings. Shared writings is when teachers are writing down the information that the students are saying orally. Have you ever heard of shared reading, friends? Why don't you tell them what shared readings are, Ellie? Well, shared readings are sim similar to shared writings, but are a little different. In shared readings, students have access to the text. For shared readings, we will need our butter added to the bowl. Now we need some baking powder to mix into the bowl. Baking powder, also known as interactive readings, is when the teacher is reading to the students while asking the students questions that correlate to the story. Not to mention Maggie, but baby baking powder, aka interactive readings, is my favorite type of ingredient. Nice. Well, Ellie, we can't forget about the different comprehension strategies that teachers use when doing interactive read-alouds. These comprehension strategies symbolize salt. Oh yeah, I forgot about them. There are different strategies teachers use when reading to students, like generating questions, predicting, making connections, inferencing, visualizing, and retelling. You know what else teachers use when using the different comprehension strategies? What? Anchor charts. What are anchor charts? Anchor charts are usually created with the students while the teacher writes down the information. For our cake, anchor charts represent the sweet sugar. Sounds sweet. Well, Maggie, I have a question. Aren't word walls the same things as anchor charts? No, Ellie. Word walls are usually hung up around the classroom with high frequency words on them. Oh yeah, that's right. Shouldn't they be colorful and be put into alphabetical order? That's correct. Please pass me the vanilla so I can add the word walls into our cake. Hmm, I feel like I'm missing an ingredient. I know what it is. It's the milk. Oh yeah, the milk, aka kid writing. Well, Maggie, if I'm being completely honest with you, milk, aka kid writing, is my second favorite ingredient. Kid writing allows the students to draw their ideas out before they actually write. Oh yeah, and then after the students draw, they get to write about it. Sounds pretty cool if you ask me. It sure is. Now we have to mix all the ingredients together and then put it into the oven to cook. Well friends, it is officially time to put our literacy cake into the oven. But remember, literacy cakes take time to make. Everyone has to stay patient throughout the baking process because we never know how long it'll take to be excellent at all the different literacy aspects. I agree, Maggie. Very well said. Ellie, I have exciting news! What is it? Our literacy cake is done! Yay! Well, now that the cake is out of the oven, it is time for the icing, aka the phonic patterns. Phonic patterns? What are those? Phonic patterns are seen in words. They are a whole bunch of different patterns like sly y, silent e, vowel teams, bossy r, final words, and so much more. Very cool, very cool. Well, silly goose, don't just stand there. Put the sprinkles on the cake. Oh yeah, I forgot about the sprinkles, AKA phonics. Phonics is such a big thing to talk about. Therefore, all I'm going to say, phonics is the relationship between letters and sounds. 
Ta-da! We're finished! <laughs> well, friends, it has been fun baking with you and talking about literacy. Until next time, bye! bye.